Welcome to Minecraft Matters. Today, I'm speaking with early career researchers who contributed to the SRC Minecraft titled "Fostering Prosociality in Refugee Children: An Intervention with Rohingya Children." Our discussion focuses on research impact on early career researchers, shaping perspectives and future plans. So, how has your involvement in this project impacted your perspectives, and how might be woven into your future plans? I can jump in uh, first if uh, <laughs> no one else is uh, doing that. So, um, yeah, so my involvement in the project um, started probably about five years ago at this point, and. Um, just a bit of background on the type of research I was doing at the time. It was focused around how um, collaboration can boost prosociality and fairness in children. And I had done a bit of cross-cultural research on that topic, uh, but it was less of an applied question. So um, there was a nice bridge here where we were able to leverage some of that research I had done on the benefits of collaboration and uh, take it into a refugee context. So first, um, Nora and myself uh, were involved in a smaller scale project where we traveled to India. Um, and it was almost like a pilot for this larger project, which is represented in the monograph. Um, and there was a smaller refugee settlement um, in India. And uh, we, we ran a study there, found out um, that emotion perspective taking and collaboration do impact pro-sociality and Rohingya refugee children, and that there were differences in terms of uh, the effectiveness um, depending on birthplace, so whether they were born in Myanmar or born in the camp. Um, so from there, uh, the involvement in this project has, has really been um, very exciting uh, for myself, and one of the areas that it's uh, taking me, which has already started, is to look at how uh, tensions between refugee and host community members exist, and whether we can use some of the similar tools that we've used to scaffold uh, pro-social development in the monograph, so things like emotion perspective taking, um, but mo mostly collaboration, and see whether we can use those tools to reduce um, intergroup tension and in-group bias between refugee and host community children. So I've already started to implement some of these projects. Um, within uh, the mega camp complex in Bangladesh. And so uh, hopefully there'll be more to report on that soon. Yeah, and so um, I can speak to what John was talking about as far as um, this cross-cultural context. Um, it's the first project that I've been involved in where um, I've been doing work that um, is focused on people in a area outside of the West. Um, and it felt particularly important to be doing it with this population of uh, refugees, um, uh, which could lead to great information about how they can be helped, um, which, which also uh, relates to what I learned about the um, relation of um, well, how how pro sociality uh, may work with this population, and in general, since I came from the executive functions uh, part of um, the project. So I'll jump in here. Um, John already mentioned uh, our initial involvement in what was somewhat a pilot study in India um, before the Bangladesh work, and um, I was involved with that as well. And that really did help shape and shift where my work is going and has gone since then. So that started about five years ago. And uh, I came into that project with a background in studying resilience. So looking at what is it that enables children to survive and do well or develop well, even when exposed to conditions or situations or environments that we would expect would adversely affect their development. And so working in this refugee settlement outside of Hyderabad in India, um, in a crisis affected environment, you really see in, really, in real time 
in observable ways how crises expose children to developmental threats, um, both, both directly and then also indirectly because they're weakening the capacity of family or community to be able to respond to those threats and, um, and protect children. So um, what is interesting about that work and also about the work in Bangladesh is we can see how interventions and building these supportive environments, um, how development is plastic. So they can help, these interventions can help mitigate um, adverse effects of crises that we would expect. Um, but what really has been interesting to me and where my work has shifted is that if we look at survival and development, which is also a human right, um, and these interventions that, that have come out in this monograph that are discussed in the monograph. So we are helping mitigate some adverse effects or helping shift some of those adverse effects and able to promote, pro promote, promote pro-social development. Um, but what's interesting to me too, is that we're also setting the building blocks for processes that are also inherent in, in peace building and humanitarian action. So the, where my shift has gone is, is looking at the importance of starting with child development and understanding, understanding child development um, to building peace. So peace building processes from local to global scales and the importance of pro-sociality in those processes. Um, like empathy and compassion and fairness. Okay, so my name is Rilav and uh, speaking of the impact of the project on my perspective, I think that this project has been a continuation of a work that I started on refugees and newcomers um, eight years ago. So this have been the focus of my research and it actually influenced how do I pri prioritize the studies that does address the needs of marginalized and vulnerable populations. So now it makes me think about, it, there has to be a lot of work and understanding the challenges that they're facing. And there has to be more commitment into developing more targeted interventions that can support uh, their development and well-being. With respect to my future plans, men moving forward, which has actually started since I'm um, my work in a, in a school board, um, I'm continuing with my research and uh, you know looking at the developmental trajectories of uh, newcomers and refugee children, and focusing on interventions that promote their resilience and their well-being. And this project has really inspired me in that sense to continue with that line of research. So looking forward to have a lot of external research collaborations with, uh, you know, academic institutions that have that implemented in school to support also refugees in an educational setting, because we know that these programs are very crucial for their, for the refugee children's mental health, for their academic performance, and it does support their social and emotional development and help them to navigate their difficult circumstances, not only when they're in a refugee camp, but also when they are in, in a host country. Hello. So I think I can go next. Uh, my research uh, is generally focused on understanding the factors that are related to social emotional development in children. And my research is generally targeted to typically developing children living in typical environments. I have had some cross-cultural research, I have had some research with uh, refugee populations, but my involvement of this project was more about a theoretical uh, way, uh, within a more theoretical as perspective, and I was also interested in the assessment aspect of for this research. So what I did was I collaborated uh, about coding of different tasks that we have examined in this research. I have uh, designed and I have helped design the coding of different assessment tools like the origami assessment or the engine task assessment. And we have worked on and collaborated on how to best investigate the information that we have at hand. 
So this research had been really good for me and for my research in terms of having this collaboration with uh, a wide range of different uh, experts in the field that are working together to create something bigger. And this is one of the few intervention projects that I have to taken part in with refugee children, which is extremely important because unfortunately Rohingya children are a small population of refugee children within the world and we are having an increased number of conflicts, forced migration, unfortunately, going on in the world. So in the near future, we are going to be needing more such studies and we are going to be needing further collaborations as such. So I think this is an important study to put seeds into this very wide, important uh, future research. And hopefully we are going to be able to collaborate together within different contexts. So I am originally from Turkey and I am currently living in Canada. Both of these countries that I know of are living with refugees that are in need of more interventions with refugees. So I am really interested in continuing our collaboration in that sense. And uh, overall, uh, I am interested in, as I said, the pro-social development in children and pro-social development in refugee children as well. But I am also interested in the parenting side of it. So my future research would be to implement these knowledge to how to help parents to help their children. So I would be happy to go ahead and take a next step to help parents so that the parents will be a sustainable resource for their children. Thank you. So I might be the youngest uh, member of the of this group right now because uh, when I was first involved in the project, I was still in my first uh, third year of my undergrad studies. And just being involved in the study, it really just broadened my perspective in terms of doing developmental research. So my involvement was mainly in just developing training materials for the Rohingya facilitator. And I also helped uh, mainly and uh, read that with the coding process. And just when doing the pro coding process, uh, I really just learned uh, the perspectives of the Rohingya children and how differently they think from children of a Western context. And it's really a shame that uh, so in the mainstream uh, psychology research, we often neglect these voices. They're often just kind of washed away. So I feel like uh, the main inspiration that this uh, study gave towards my future research is that I do hope to uh, consider more cultural and cross-cultural research as my future initiatives. So the Rohingya Project, it is a very big initiative, but Dr. Callahan and her team made it possible. And that in itself is really amazing. And I'm really grateful to be a part of this study. Okay, so um, my main role in the project was statistical analysis. Um, as a first step, I worked with Professor Callahan to select um, the most fitting analyses. And it was an interesting process and different from what I'm used to because um, Professor Callahan would consult um, Saifula, who is one of our co-authors working directly with the Rohingya population. And Saifula would relay key factors um, observed in the camp. And I would incorporate these factors into the analytic plan and the way we approached um, the analysis. So I felt very connected to the project, even as a statistician. And I think on a broader level, um, Professor Callahan and everything I learned about our large team throughout this project taught me the importance of maintaining scientific humility and allowing the community, um, especially vulnerable communities like the Rohingya, um, to inform the science at all stages of the research project. Um, and this is something I'll carry, I'll carry forward uh, with me as a young scholar. Read more about this topic in the monograph issue, Fostering Post-Sociality in Refugee Children, an Intervention with Rohingya Children by Tara Callahan, Tyler Colasant, Saifu Muhammad et al. If you like this video, consider watching our Monograph Matters playlist. For additional resources related to this and other issues of the Monograph of the Society for Research in Child Development, please visit monographmatters.srcd.org.